Good morning from Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, this is Jessica from So Many Creations, and today we're going to talk about zippers. I'm sure some of you out there hate zippers, and I'm hoping that I can convince you that they're not so bad. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to be a successful zipper putter inner. I'm not really sure if that's a word, but that's what we're going with. So one of my best tips for putting in a zipper is making sure that you have the right zipper. So this one that I have right here, this is actually a parka zipper. This is one from a box store. Um, sometimes some of the shops have them too, but these are made for clothing. You can see how wide the teeth are on here. My number one question I always ask when buying a zipper, can I sew over this? And if the answer is no, or it looks like a no, then I'm not gonna buy this zipper. That's why I tend to stay away from these and metal zippers. I like to use zippers like this. This one is from Biani. This is a double zip. I love these for purses because they open so from both ends, so they're great for overnight bags or large uh, purses, and the teeth are definitely small enough to sew over. And this right here is just your standard plastic um, zipper, has just a single pull on it, opens really nicely, and you can definitely cut and sew over this. So these are great zippers to use for your purses and wallets. So I use a couple of different techniques. First one I'm gonna show you is what I call a sandwich technique. I'm gonna demo that with this zipper right here. And I have a couple of pieces of fabric. This one right here has some fusible interfacing on it and this one does not. Depending on the pattern, you may or may not have interfacing on both pieces. And what I like to do is lay out my piece right here that we'll call this the outside or the main piece with the interfacing, right side up. And I take my zipper right side down. And you'll notice that my zipper is much longer than the piece and that's okay. I always say longer is better because I like to keep the metal pieces away from my machine. And like I said before, we can sew over the ends and cut them. So I put this face down and I add a couple of pins. And I always like to pin separately, that way nothing shifts. When you try to pin three pieces together, something always moves and that something is usually the zipper. So I add a couple of pins here and then I'm gonna take my other piece, right side down, and put that right on top, and I'll add a few more pins. And I always pin like this, so that my pins are sticking out from the top. That way when I'm ready to sew, I can take those off and I'm not sewing over them. After I've sewn that with my quarter inch foot, it looks like this. I have both of my pieces now sewn, I press them and I top stitch them, and I did all of this with my quarter inch foot. This is my Janome foot that I always use has the guide on the edge. And I like this one best for all of my sewing, including zippers. I don't use my zipper foot because I find that I get a lot straighter line with this. It's a lot sturdier. So that's one of the techniques. That's something that I would use in this wallet right here. This is the Prima Diva. And you can see the zipper pouch right here, fully lined and finished. And that's the same technique that I use for this one. And I used much longer zippers on this. They were about 14 inches to begin with. I just cut off those ends and everything came out nice and straight. The next technique that I like to use is for something like my Diva Wallet. This is uh, what some people refer to as a buttonhole. It's an old technique that I've added a little bit of um, some modern updates to. So I like to do this with the fusible tape. The one that I like to use is Light Steam Seam. This is a quarter inch wide fusible uh, tape that has paper on one side. So I like to use this on, to create the opening and also to fuse the zipper in place. So what I do first, and this is all in the pattern, I draw my lines. This is where my zipper is gonna go. And I just use a regular pen for this. Anything will work as long as it's not a friction pen. We don't want that to iron off while we're trying to work. So I draw my lines and then I cut. I cut back and I cut on the center line and I fold it open just like this. Underneath here, you'll see that's kind of stuck down. I use some of the quarter inch tape. Once I have that pressed and it looks good, I take another strip of tape and I put it just like this right there, fuse that down and then I peel the paper off. Put my zipper right side up and I put my pocket piece right on top of it I can then take my iron and fuse that down, make sure that's nice and straight. And what's great about this tape is if I'm not happy with this, I can peel it back and adjust it. It's sticky enough to get it to my sewing machine, but it's not too thick that it will gum up my needle. I can sew around this. And again, I also use my quarter inch foot for this. I have not used a zipper foot in many years and for any of these techniques. And that is how you create this one. 
Again, longer is fine because when we're done, we can trim off the end right here. And this pocket is not 100% lined, but it's just for your change. So it's a nice, simple intro to zippers if you haven't done one in a while or if you've never done one. And the third technique that I like to use is for a recess zipper. A lot of purses right now have great recess zippers in them, but they look a little intimidating. So again, I go back to that tape and I make my recess zipper um, piece with the tape. I have my pieces cut out and on the wrong side, on the short ends, I put a little bit of that fusible tape. I use that to make a nice crease and then I peel the paper off and I fuse it down. So I have both of my short ends fused down nice and clean. Then I take that same piece and I put a piece of the tape on the right side, the long side, fuse that down fold it over and give it a press and then I can peel this off when I'm ready to put it on my zipper. I take my zipper before I get started I cut off the little metal end this little piece right here and I make a little um, a little arc right there put a couple stitches in hold that in place that way I have nice clean ends I zip that up take this piece right here and I put that right on top fuse that in place I put another one on this side, and then on the back side I put two as well. And when I'm done, I can stitch around. I go about an eighth of an inch, and I stitch all the way around, and now I have a completely finished recessed zippered placket that I can put inside of a purse. I'll show you how that looks inside of a bag. So this right here is the Abbey Sling Bag, and you can see that's how it looks finished. I can unzip, so I keep all of my goodies inside. It's completely finished and it gets sewn right into the lining, so that last raw edge is completely hidden. <laughs> and that was Zipper 101 with Jessica from So Many Creations. Hopefully you have a little bit more confidence and you'll try out some zippers in your next bag or wallet. Come see me at the next Quilt Week. Thanks.